In this video, I'm going to show you how to do pull-ups correctly for beginners and how to avoid the most common pitfalls and mistakes that will drastically hinder your game. So, without further ado, let's get into it, shall we? What is going on my friends, this is Jake of the www.jgcalisthenics.co.uk And if you're looking for the best guidance for starting calisthenics then make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and turn on post notifications because I upload videos specifically for you every Monday and Thursday. Right, so a bit like the push-up guide last week, we're going to first of all cover how to perform the pull-up correctly with the correct form cues and how to avoid the most common mistakes that I personally made myself so you can ultimately make the most progress in your pull-ups possible. Sound like a plan? Awesome, so let's start with how to do our pull-ups correctly, right? So first thing, step number one, is we're going to grab the bar with a pronated grip, so palms facing away from us, just outside of shoulder width, right? After that, we're going to hang for the bar passively. And we're going to keep our core and our glutes engaged. So we're going to squeeze our glutes like we're pinching a pound coin in between our butt cheeks and then bracing our core like we're about to get punched in the stomach, right? Step three is we're going to initiate and engage the scapula. So we're going to pull the shoulder blades down and back, which is known as scapular depression and retraction. Like we're pinching a pound coin in between our shoulder blades. We're pinching a few coins, right? We're pinching a pound coin between our butt cheeks and our shoulder blades, but it's a very good visual technique to use, right? And so as we do that, initially escape and then pull up. Step four, which is to pull up powerfully, like we're trying to elbow someone behind us, so that our chin comes far past the bars you can see. We're gonna load down control. It's a complete full range of motion until our elbows are straight, right? So applying all those cues, so we can make the most gains possible. Does that make sense? Awesome, so now we're gonna go over the most common mistakes. Now, mistake number one, which, this kind of pains me to say it because I was a primary culprit of this, was cutting range of motion. And this is obviously seen either at the top range of the pull-up or the bottom range of the pull-up, right? So at the top, it will be obviously not actually letting your chin go way over the bar, right? Most people, like I did myself, so come to about here, but like, yeah, that's a rep. Yeah, two reps. Yep, yeah, three reps. Or, as you actually lower down, you go about halfway. Yep, yeah, one, two, three, four, or even down to like this, this is not a full range of motion. Until your elbows are straight, that is why it's a full range of motion. So once again, you want to pull up, are you actually trying to not only get your chin over the bar, but your clavicle to the bar, right? And then lowering down, till your elbows are straight. That's one full repetition, right? The state number two is kipping and using any form of excess of momentum. And that's why I usually advocate when you do pull-ups to actually do them with your legs straight, tucked in together, because it practically forces you to actually use proper form, right? Because what you don't want to do as you fatigue is be like, oh, okay, yeah, done, done, yeah, that's, oh, that's, yeah, 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 yeah. This is not a pull-up, right? This is not a pull-up. This is bodyweight strength training, my friend. We want to make sure we're doing strict form, with proper form, so we can get properly awesome results, you know what I'm saying? So again, you don't want to be swinging your body back and forth, trying to get a bit of momentum. Keep your body tight, tense, and rigid. So the only way you can get yourself up and down from the bar is through the strength of your back and biceps. Does that make sense? So instead of your pull-ups looking like this, it literally just looks like one fluid motion, right? You know what I'm saying? Right, so mistake number three is leading with the arms and then the shoulders shrug up and allowing your back to round forward like a hunchback, right? This, again, was one of the main mistakes I made myself. The reason is behind this as to why this happens is because we don't actually initiate the scapula properly before doing the pull-up, as I explained at the start of the video, if you were listening correctly, right? Which I should hope so, right? So, again, but we don't initiate the scapula, what will happen is that instead of pulling with the back, we'll pull with the arms, right? As seen here, as you'll see me pull up, my shoulders will shrug up, my posture around forward, and we get a nasty looking pull up, which not only impacts our gains, but will also put unwanted strain on our shoulders to set us up for injury, which we don't want. So, we want to make sure that we are initiating that scapula for each and every repetition, as I'll do here. So, starting out, hanging from the bar, we're going to retract and depress the scapula, setting the shoulder blades together. So, when we actually pull up, we're going to be pulling from the back, and we're trying to elbow someone behind us towards our back pockets, 
rather than leaning with the arms and strong our shoulders up, right? Without retracting the scapula right, it'll look like this. But when we do, it'll be like boom. Much more stronger, much more powerful, and far less likely to get injured, right? In fact, if you didn't, your pull-ups right here, not gonna get injured, right? And also, comment down below what I'd love to know is how many pull-ups can you do in a row? And that's strict form, strict pull-ups. I'd love to know how many you can do down in the comment section below. Now, mistake number four, I'm gonna keep the camera angle here because I think it's most relevant, is pulling unevenly, right? So for me, right, I'm left-handed, I'm more predominant with the left side, right? So what I did when I started doing pull-ups, it gets to a point where still pulling evenly, like this, right? I start to fatigue, I go like, yeah, 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 that's a good rep, that's a good rep. Or if you're right side, be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't want to do that, not only for the sake of not maximizing our gains, but obviously we can get a lot of nasty muscle imbalances, again, further injuries, which isn't very good. If you're stronger side, your left side, like myself, you want to mentally think of using your right side more, and then vice versa if your stronger side is your right side. So instead of pulling from like a 60%, 40% distribution, you want to think more of a 50-50 distribution, right? And last but not least, the last mistake, which is certainly not the last mistake I made on the list when first doing pull-ups, is the forward neck posture, right? Basically the duck, the goose, like go, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? So when people fatigue, right, instead of coming up powerfully with a full range of motion and actually not only allowing their chin to go over the bar, but also, you know, meeting the clavicle with the bar, right? What people do instead, is that they'll strain their neck forward so they go like or instead of actually meeting the bar so i'll be like yeah yeah oh, uh, yeah, oh god right. <laughs> no me gooster no me gooster because not only is that going to naturally reduce the range of motion if you try and cheat like that but if you think about it if you look at me right here just doing rep after rep like this and flexing your neck rather than your back muscles you're gonna put a lot of unwanted strain here on both the flexes and extensors of the neck, which as I've said once again, will lead to some nasty muscle imbalances and certainly postural deficiencies, which we really do not want to be happening to us. Trust me, I talk from experience, my friend, you'd much rather be doing your pull-ups properly than trying to do more reps and cheat yourself, right? So again, think of throughout the whole range of motion, from the start of the set to the end of the set, of keeping your neck completely neutral, right? Remember, your body should remain completely rigid. The only thing that should be doing the work is the back and biceps, right? As shown here, right? Again, not straight neck forward or that, just strict, proper form. Does that make sense? And so I said, if you enjoyed this video, you like this video and you really gain value with it, then make sure to screenshot this video right now and send me a DM either through Facebook or Instagram with my links right up here for you to be able to message me. And let me know what part of this video you found most helpful. I love interacting with each and every one of you and I make sure to reply to each comment as soon as I can. And once again, remember if you've enjoyed this video, make sure to give this video a thumbs up to let me know you enjoyed it and comment down below which part of this video you found most helpful. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Share this with a friend who you feel would benefit from a tutorial like this. And as that's enough for me today, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, my friend, and as a crew member aboard the Gator Express, keep moving forward.